It's another WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. Additional rounds of severe thunderstorms leading to flooding issues. We'll break down your Defender Radar Network in a moment. Flooding led to a dangerous situation in central Kentucky where this Jeep was swept away by high water. And former President Bill Clinton back in the bluegrass trying to drum up support for his wife. We'll take you to his rally in Frankfurt. WKYT News starts now with First Alert Weather. Good afternoon, I'm Jennifer Palumbo. A flash flood watch is out for much of the region and storms are firing up in parts of Kentucky. Here's a live look at downtown Lexington where it's sunny and close to 80 degrees right now, but it may not be dry for long. High winds and hail are possible tonight, and that's why it's another WKYT First Alert Severe Weather Day. Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey joins us now, and Chris, you have a new warning. Yeah, a couple of severe thunderstorm warnings that are out for parts of the area. Get into parts of Campbell or the Campbellsville area into Taylor County, Western Marion County, and back into Southern Hardin County, and newly issued for parts of the Clinton County area over toward sections of northern Tennessee. That is a severe thunderstorm morning for both of those areas. You mentioned that flash flood watch. That is for most of central and eastern Kentucky, and that literally should probably include more counties to the north of that. Given the fact that we've had so much rain over the past week, since Saturday, we've had five, six, even local seven-inch amounts recorded into parts of central Kentucky. Let's look at our Defender Radar Network, and let's cruise in on the thunderstorms that are flaring up quickly right now. These are likely to become some large tail producers may have some damaging winds with them, but it's the flood threat that is getting my attention as we go through the next few hours. Severe thunderstorm morning, Green, LaRue, Nelson, and uh, Taylor counties. That will take us for 15 minutes or so. Danville, over into Lancaster, Stanford, Lincoln County. These are the areas that were hard hit over the past few days with a lot of rain. We're likely going to see some flash flooding with these slow moving thunderstorms working across sections of the Paint Lick area and over toward Madison County. It's not going to take a whole lot to cause some high water issues. Downtown Richmond now, heavy rains are just off to our east, at least the heaviest rain. Lexington, we're okay for now. A little thunderstorm popping near Owingsville, southeastern Kentucky. A little small hell possible to the northwest of Hazard on top of Hyden into Leslie County. That continues a little farther toward the south, but we're really focusing on the storm clusters, Jennifer, coming out. Us from southwest to northeast. There's a spin showing up in your radar across western Kentucky. What that is telling me is that we're going to continue to see these lines of thunderstorms developing as this spin on your future radar makes its way right on top of the area this evening. Damaging winds, flooding rains, the primary players that we'll track as we go through the next few hours. Chris, a flooded road in Anderson County caused some frightening moments for three people last night. The county's emergency management director says more than six feet of water covered Rice Road at the Salt River. Three people in a Jeep tried to cross the flooded road. Officials say the Jeep got stuck in the water and was swept away. Officer Don Evans sent us this video he shot from Sky First. The three people inside the Jeep managed to swim to safety before emergency crews arrived. The three people were not injured. That Jeep was found today. For the second time in a week, former President Bill Clinton is back in the bluegrass state. He's hoping to give his wife's presidential campaign a boost with Kentucky's primary next Tuesday. After a rally this morning in Owensboro, Mr. Clinton just finished talking at the Capitol Plaza Hotel in Frankfurt. Victor Puente is live there with our top story at 4. Victor? Well, Clinton took the stage just after 3 o'clock. He spoke for about 45 minutes here at the Capitol Plaza Hotel, telling Kentuckians why they should vote for his wife, Hillary, in next Tuesday's primary. She's the best change maker I've ever known. She's the best at this I've ever known. There are 35,000 potential votes in this primary in the Frankfurt area. So I want you to vote for her. Clinton says Hillary has the best ideas to create more jobs and to reduce inequality, and that she has solid plans to do just that. He said she wants to create a national infrastructure program while interest rates are still low. Clinton went on to say that by creating this program, it will help bring more manufacturing jobs back to America. He went on to talk about Hillary's plan for a free college education to anyone who needs it. He cited Kentucky's Berea College as an example of a school where students were able to work to pay for that education. Live in Frankfurt, Victor Puente, WKYT. Tonight, Bill Clinton will be in eastern Kentucky speaking at an elementary school at, in Prestonsburg at 745. 
Last week, Hillary and Bill Clinton, along with her rival for the Democratic nomination, Senator Bernie Sanders, all made stops in Kentucky. Well, meanwhile, Donald Trump is giving the thumbs up about his visit to Washington today to meet with key Republican leaders. A short time ago, the presumptive GOP nominee said on Twitter that things are, in his words, working out really well. Among those the billionaire met in Washington, House Speaker Paul Ryan, who had been holding off on giving an endorsement. Diane Gallagher has the latest now from the campaign trail. With fanfare in the form of protests Stop Trump! and flashes rivaling a red carpet arrival, Donald Trump descended upon D.C. The presumptive Republican nominee in town to pitch himself to members of his own party, specifically the Speaker of the House, after Paul Ryan had this to say a week ago about endorsing Trump. I'm just not ready to do that at this point. I'm not there right now. Party Chairman Reince Priebus, who's been talking with Trump daily, arranged and sat in on the meeting. But after spending 45 minutes together, it appears the art of the deal author couldn't quite close the deal with the Speaker of the House, at least not just yet. I was very encouraged with this meeting, um, but this is a process. It takes a little time. You don't put it together in 45 minutes. And while they wouldn't go into detail about the discussion. It was a private meeting in my office, and I'm not going to talk about the specifics other than to say things were discussed that were specific. It's no secret that Donald Trump and I have had our differences. Uh, we talked about those differences today. All three men seem to agree that it was a step in the direction of unity. Ryan and Trump even released a joint statement saying as much. I think the headline is positive first step toward unifying our party. It was a great meeting, and that's the only way it can be described. Now, Trump also met with House and Senate Republicans, including Majority Leader Mitch McConnell Thursday. Additional meetings between Trump and party members are expected leading into July's GOP convention. In Washington, Diane Gallagher. Trump is under pressure to release his tax returns. The 2012 Republican nominee Mitt Romney says if he does not, Trump should be disqualified from running. Lexington police have cited a mother for endangering the welfare of a minor after they say she left her two young children alone. Two men say they spotted a four-year-old alone in front of a store in the Winburn neighborhood around 8 this morning. They called police, who say the boy then walked them a quarter mile back to his home where they found a two-year-old in a crib. Police say the children's mother, Kimberly Strahan, told them she was taking her oldest child to school and a neighbor was supposed to be watching the younger children. Police contact, contacted social services. An elderly Woodford County man is in the hospital with life-threatening injuries after a standoff with police this morning. Police say 89-year-old William McDaniel barricaded himself in a home on Amsden Avenue across from the Versailles Hospital. They say he shot himself in the head. A KSP robot retrieved the gun before officers from the strategic response team entered the home. Our reporters are working on a number of other stories for WKYT starting at 4.30. Sam Dick joins us from the newsroom with a look at some of the news in progress. Good afternoon, Sam. Good afternoon, Jennifer. A teenager is now charged as an adult in a deadly shooting. Lexington police say that 15-year-old Christopher Bravo shot and killed 20-year-old Andreas Soto Jr. in a parking lot on Oxford Circle back in December. Bravo appeared in court today where police outlined the case against him. Coming up on WKYT News at 5, you'll hear from a detective and why Bravo is claiming self-defense. A school bus driver accused of driving under the influence has pled not guilty. Brian Fletcher was arraigned in Montgomery County this morning. Police arrested him last month outside Camargo Elementary. His next hearing is not until September because the court is waiting on blood tests before moving forward. Fletcher has been suspended from the Montgomery County School District with pay. A frightening discovery for a central Kentucky family. A large hole is forming in their front yard. They think it's going to get even larger. It's on Fort Church Road near Lancaster in Garrett County. You can look down into it and see and hear water. It appears that the hole goes down and under Fort Church Road toward a large field. A lot of rain last night, and today we come back, and it's... It's probably twice as big as it was yesterday. The people here say they're really not sure what to do. They say the landlord has talked about filling it in with dirt, rock, and gravel. We'll have more on that story ahead on WKYT News at 430. That's a look at some news in progress. Jennifer, back to you. Thank you, Sam. Facebook is on the hot seat in Washington about its trending topics. One lawmaker wants to know if the social network tried to push certain political viewpoints. 
Keep up with the latest news on WKYT.com. Join the conversation on Twitter and become a part of the WKYT Facebook family. Google plans to ban all ads from so-called payday lenders. That tops today's WKYT Money Watch. The tech giant says the short-term high interest rate loans are deceptive and harmful. Google's ban starts July 13th and applies to ads for loans due within 60 days or when the interest rate is 36% or higher. New developments today in the latest Facebook controversy. Allegations of liberal bias are drawing scrutiny from a powerful Republican senator. As we told you earlier this week, former employees claim the social network blocks stories about conservatives in its trending section. Jan Crawford has the latest. So I would just encourage you to keep an open mind. In this video posted last month, Facebook encouraged users to seek out opposing points of view. When maybe, just maybe, it's a good time to search for them to find the other side of the story. But South Dakota Senator John Thune is worried the conservative side is being suppressed on the social network. In a letter sent to Facebook Tuesday, the South Dakota Republican asked if the trending topics were subjective and filtered to support or suppress particular points of view. Consumers have rights, and we want to make sure that we're protecting consumers' rights and that, uh, that businesses aren't, in fact, uh, engaging any kind of deceptive practice. On Monday, Gizmodo Technology Editor Michael Nunez revealed that Facebook employs human curators who work off a list of stories generated by an algorithm. Then they select the articles that become Facebook trending topics. We have evidence of them blacklisting, in a lot of cases, conservative news. And What's so, a particular story that they blacklisted? Well, so the CPAC conference, for instance, you know, the, as that was going on, that was not allowed to trend. In a statement, Facebook said it will keep reviewing our operational practices around trending topics. And if we find they're inadequate, we will take immediate steps to fix them. There's a real fear that Facebook could actually control the way people think. CBS News contributor Nicholas Thompson says the controversy could reinforce a perception problem Facebook already had among conservatives. Its founder and chairman, Mark Zuckerberg, has recently taken positions supporting same-sex marriage, immigration reform, and Black Lives Matter. If Republicans leave Facebook, that's terrible for Facebook. They can't afford to alienate the party that controls Congress. I'm Deanne Stevens out and about at the Fayette County Drivers Education Program with how you can get your teen involved. That's coming up here on WKYT. It is a slow go on the roads across the area right now, especially those folks getting down into uh, the Madison County area. A little flooding reported in the Richmond area. We'll take a look at the flash flood threat going forward in just a moment. Now, your hour by hour forecast with Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey. It's a WKYT first alert severe weather day. The severe thunderstorm warning that was out for part of Marion County down into Taylor County has expired. Severe thunderstorm warning for Monroe and Cumberland counties uh, continues. That's it right now in terms of the active warnings. I still maintain it's the flood threat that is the greatest going forward. Most of the area is under a flash flood watch through the evening. Showers and thunderstorms, especially now targeting areas along and south of Interstate 64. And of greatest concern right now is going to be this line of thunderstorms that stretches from just to the west of Campbellsville, across parts of Marion County, northern Casey County, Lancaster, Garrett County, we picked up a ton of rain. Got a weather watcher over around the Paint Look area who picked up better than six inches of rain over the past couple of days. So it's not going to take very much rain at all to get in on some renewed high water issues. Heaviest rain on the eastern side of Boyle County, right on top of Bryantsville, down into Lancaster. And watching Madison County, Richmond to Berea, very heavy rains coming down. Also getting a little bit of high water reports just to the west now of the Richmond Center here into uh, downtown Richmond to the west of Interstate 75. And more heavy rain continues to come on in. Never try to drive through a flooded roadway. You were seeing the video earlier today out of Anderson County where folks tried to do just that and their Jeep was swept away. Heavy rains here in parts of the Powell County area, Estill County, Lexington, rains are just to our south and southeast. Speaking of the southeast, let's go into the hazard area. Maybe some small hill with these thunderstorms from Perry County down into Leslie County. We got a break in the action here in London and Corbin. 
But other thunderstorms are cruising to the northeast out of Tennessee. This isn't a big severe weather event like what we had a few nights ago or even a smaller event like what we had last night. This is still much more of a heavy rain threat to me. And especially when you have this little curly cue that is out to our west, that's a little meso low pressure center with those thunderstorms out ahead of that that can just spiral around that little circulation center. I'm not talking about anything uh, tornadic with that. That's the lowest threat with this, but it is flooding that we'll keep a very close eye on as we go through the next several hours. Future radar, look at that line of thunderstorms. And here is that little spin that you can see in the radar, that little low pressure center that by midnight is into parts of northeastern Kentucky and the Buckeye State. And as that zips its way through here, better weather comes into town for our Friday. We look very, very good tomorrow afternoon. To get there, models are still spitting out in some areas one to two inches of rain. Since Saturday, some of us have had better than five or six inches of rain. So we're already ahead of our monthly uh, total for the entire month in a few spots. Here's a little different hour by hour. Watch how quickly those thunderstorms zip into Easter Kentucky by 11 o'clock. A better brand of air for your Friday. At least we picked a Friday for the best weather. Noontime 65 degrees tomorrow afternoon, upper 60s to low 70s out there. Out at about Friday evening, good shape. Then we're going to Saturday morning. Here comes a cold front. Some small hail producing showers and thunderstorms are possible Saturday morning. By Saturday afternoon, it is just downright chilly, and the temperatures here got so cold they just decided to drop out on me. Let's look at the seven-day forecast to put the numbers on there to show you what we are talking about for the weekend. Green thumbs, you're on alert. Sunday night or Saturday night into Sunday morning, 35 for the possibility of some frost. Highs this weekend right around 60. As we go into next week, Jennifer, those temperatures are warming up. We may go from frost to flooding rains and thunderstorms again in a 24 to 36 hour period. Next week looks very stormy. Very much, Chris. Learning how to drive and getting a license are a rite of passage for many teenagers. Deanne Stevens is out and about today to tell us about a program that can help get them ready for the roads. Hi, Deanne. Hey, good afternoon, guys. We are here at the Fayette County uh, Driver Education Program. And this is a program, parents, listen up. You want your children involved in. Billy Fryer is the director of the program. This is a critical program for kids, those especially turning 16. It is. It is a program that teens need to have. Uh, we've had 870 of them perform this. Wow. We've had great success with it. And it's something that we feel teens today really need to be involved in. It makes, it's something completely different. Really, it makes such a difference when you put those kids on the road and you know that they've been taught by professionals here. We do. We have uh, eight folks that are teaching here. Uh, four of us have over 140 years driving experience. The others are police officers and teachers and coaches. So everyone on our staff is here for the right reason and that's for these kids. Absolutely. All right. Well, what are some of the things that you teach these kids? Some of the things that we teach the kids are the fact that they're going to be driving on county roads and that these roads are dangerous. What we're going to see here is an off-road recovery. Uh, in Fayette County, we have this situation come up uh, many times where a vehicle goes off the road, the driver does not understand how to uh, how to react to it, and the reaction to it is very simple and very safe. And here we have an accident avoidance maneuver that we're doing, and that's one of our second things that we like to do is accident avoidance that gives another option to all the drivers that come here as opposed to just slamming on the brakes and hoping for the best, that, they, uh, that they're able to learn a technique. Here we're going to do an off-road recovery again that's going to be completely, the car's completely off the road and yet it comes back on very smooth. Uh, in addition to those two techniques, we also go into uh, curves and intersections. Intersections have been deemed the most dangerous uh, place you can drive, and curves are the second most dangerous place. This is all hands-on experience for the kids, by the way. And there is a way for you to get your kids involved in the program. Coming up at 450, we're going to tell you how to do that. And do you guys have a website they can check we, out? We do have a website, FayetteCountyAttorney.com, and hit the driving button. More from the Fayette County Attorney's Driver's Education Program when we return at 450. I'm Deanne Stevens, out and about. Back to you guys.
Thanks, Deanne. Popping a specific type of pain reliever may reduce your pain, but it could also dull something else. Details on new research in better living and how eating fruit in your teens could help you later in life. That's next on WKYT News at 4. Tomorrow night's Mega Millions jackpot is $161 million, and Saturday night's Powerball jackpot is $50 million. It's time for better living, health, education, and consumer news that impacts your life. Kroger has issued recalls on several products, including trail mixes, tossed salads, and frozen vegetables. The recall is due to concerns of listeria. You can find the full list of items at Kroger.com. Kroger officials say customers who've purchased the recalled items should not eat them. They can return the items to the store for a full refund. Researchers say some over-the-counter pain pills dull more than just pain. They can also dull your empathy for others. That's according to a new study by researchers at Ohio State University. The study focused on acetaminophen, the major ingredient found in Tylenol and about 600 other medicines. Researchers say they took a group of 80 college students and gave 40 of them 1,000 grams of acetaminophen. The other half were not given the drug. After one hour, the students were tested on their empathy, and researchers say the students who took the drug felt less. A team of U.S. researchers looked at the eating habits of 90,000 nurses over a period of 20 years. They found that consuming a lot of fruit during adolescence was linked to a 25% lower risk of breast cancer in middle age. Apples, bananas, and grapes appeared to have the greatest benefit. Danish researchers looked at the health effects of drinking alcohol on postmenopausal women. They found increasing alcohol intake later in life was associated with an increased breast cancer risk, but a decrease in heart disease risk. The news is just getting started. Here's Sam Dick and Amber Philpot with what's ahead at 4:30.